In this video we give an outline of the engel granger two-step co-integration analysis. So say that we have two variables CT and YT that could be for example consumption and income and we find that they are both I1 so they are unit root processes. And now we want to find out if they co-integrate. Remember that CT and YT co-integrate if beta prime xt, where we can define beta as 1 minus beta 2, and x ct and yt, so this is a linear combination equal to ct minus beta 2 yt, and the variables co-integrate if that linear combination is stationary, so it's i0. So visually this means that we have the two variables, could look something like this, yt and ct, so individually these two are unit root processes, but there exists a linear combination which could look something like this. So this is our linear combination beta prime xt which is I0 so that the stochastic trends in the two variables cancel out and beta prime xt defines the deviation from the long run equilibrium given by the co-integration relation. So in this video we want to outline the engel granger two-step procedure. The first step we estimate the static regression ct equal to mu constant term plus beta 2 yt plus a residual ut. And we can call this star So note that if the variables co-integrate, the OLS estimator beta 2 hat is super consistent. So the variance of the estimator beta 2 hat collapses at a rate of t to the power of minus 2 rather than minus 1. So we have a lot faster convergence of the estimator to the true parameter. And note that this is the case even if the dynamic terms, terms have been neglected so that this model is misspecified compared to the actual data generating process. However, the estimator is not asymptotically normal in general. This implies that we can use star for estimation, but we should not use it for testing. What we want to test now is whether or not the residual ut is stationary. Note that if ct and yt co-integrate, then the residual term ut here must be a stationary process. So we test for a unit root in ut hat, which is just ct minus mu hat minus beta 2 hat yt. And note that this corresponds to testing for no co-integration. So we can do this based on the usual augmented Dickey Fuller test. So we specify a model for the change in ut hat. We include the lag level and then we include a number of lagged first differences, coefficient ci, and then we have delta ut minus i hat, and finally we have a residual term eta. Note that we have no constant term because from the static regression star up here, we know that the uh, estimated residual by construction has a mean of zero, so we don't include a constant in the next equation, the ADF test, for a unit root. We can test the hypothesis of a unit root as a test of the null that pi is equal to zero. So this is the test for a unit root. Or alternatively, this is a test here for no co-integration. If there's a unit root in the estimated residuals from the static regression, it implies that CT and YT are not co-integrated. We use the standard t ratio as our test statistics, the estimated coefficient pi divided by the standard error of pi hat. And under the null this follows a Dickey Fuller distribution but depends on the deterministics and the number of regressors that we have in the static regression up here. So asymptotic distribution under the null depends on the deterministics and the number of regressors in the static regression denoted star here. So if we have more than one regressor, which we have in our case here, then we will shift the Dickey Fuller distribution to the left as we add more regressors. But here we only have 
one regressor yt and on top of that we have a constant term but we could also have a trend term in the standard regression up here and that would change the asymptotic distribution so this was the first step if we find co-integration we continue to the second step and then we estimate an error correction model an ECM given the error correction term t minus 1 which is ut minus 1 hat so what we do here is we simply take the residuals from the static regression up here, fix them, and we define that as our error correction term. So that will define the estimated deviation from the long run equilibrium in the last period. And here we have exploited the fact that we have a super consistent estimator of our beta 2. So we simply use that to fix the ECM term and then include it as a regressor and specify an error correction model for CT. So we have delta CT on the left hand side. On the right hand side we have alpha multiplied by the ECM term last period, so note that it's T minus 1. And then we include a constant term delta, include a number of lagged first differences of CT and YT. So here we could have a case where we only have lambda 1, delta CT minus 1, and then we have kappa 0, delta yt plus kappa 1, delta yt minus 1, and finally we have epsilon t, a residual. We could do a similar error correction model for yt. Note also that error correction of ct requires that alpha hat is negative. So if that's negative, it means that whenever the ECM term last period was positive, which implies that CT is above the equilibrium value of YT, then the effect here from this term will be negative, and that will bring CT back towards the equilibrium value. Final thing to note is that we can do standard inference on all the parameters, alpha, lambda 1, kappa 0, kappa 1, in the sense that all t ratios are asymptotically standard normally distributed under the norm. So we can simply use the standard t test to test whether alpha is significant or if all the other uh, coefficients are significant. And the intuition behind that is that all the coefficients here, so lambda 1, kappa 0, kappa 1, they are all coefficients to something that is stationary if ct and yt are i1, the first difference will be i0, so they will be stationary. And when we do inference on this parameter, say lambda 1, it is a coefficient to a stationary variable, and that implies that we can do standard inference. The same applies to alpha here, because under co-integration, the ECM term, the correction term, will be stationary. All deviations from the long run equilibrium value are stationary, and that implies that alpha is also a coefficient to a stationary term. So we can do standard inference on alpha. So to briefly summarize the Engel-Granger two-step procedure, first we estimate a static regression, it's just CT on YT and a constant. We save the estimated residuals, we test for a unit root. If we find co-integration, we go to the second step, where we estimate an error correction model for CT here, but we could also do that for YT, and there we have just included the estimated residual from the static regression as a regressor. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching.